Hello everyone, I am Vesh TV from class 7 and today we are going to start a chapter from civics which is from social studies and we are going to learn understanding democracy. It is a chapter of civics only. It's chapter number 20 on page number 193. Let's open that chapter and first search the big idea. The big idea of this chapter is to define democracy, the importance of democracy, also the key features of democracy, the brief history of democracy and the programs by the uh, government for India. Also at a glance we will learn its parts which are direct and indirect and the key features which is legislature, consecutive and etc. that we will learn in this chapter. So let's get started with the first point. India is one of the largest democracies in the world. That we know that India is the largest democracy in the world. Also, it has the uh, largest like population, you can say, but it is less than China and many big countries. But it's very large, 135 crores like that. Our freedom fighters fought and sacrificed their lives to gain independence from the British rule. After the independence, India chose to have the republic form of democratic government. Our leaders framed the constitution and our country is governed by laws. Now, you are going to learn that what is democracy. So, democracy in today's world, it, it is considered to be the best and the most popular form of the government. So, in the question, if it is asked that which is the populist, uh, which is the best and the popular form of government, so it is democracy. Then, democracy is a form of government where the people govern themselves directly or through indirect elected rep representatives. What does this mean? That democracy is a form of government in which people give their vote, uh, people give their feelings and people give their votes and ideas by the voting section by uh, electing their representatives or directly governing them. Now we have two types of uh, democracies that are direct form of democracy and indirect form of democracy. So basically in direct form of democracy in People directly participate in the process of governance and are free to vote, uh, to make uh, they make laws on their own, elect or dismiss officials, and conduct trials themselves. So there is no one to uh, like just put pressure on them that you have to vote, you don't have to vote to me, you have to vote for me. Like they would not get uh, give pressure on them in direct form of democracy, but. And this uh, like demo direct de form of democracy was started first in Athens, which is a part of ancient Greece. And this form of direct form of democracy started in 6th century BCE. Now, what is indirect democracy? Indirect democracy is when people elect their representatives who take decisions on their behalf. This is known as... Uh, this is known as represented democracy. Indirect democracy is prevalent in India, in USA and in France. So what does this uh, whole para mean? This means that the people vote and then uh, the representatives on their behalf, they take their decisions from the, for their, like, they take the decisions on behalf of us and then take the more elections and then they uh, go for more decisions. And this form of democracy is also known as representative democracy. And in which countries it is uh, like used? It is used in India, USA and France. Now the advent of democracy. What is advent of democracy? In, the, in this section, we will learn to revisit the historic events that led to the evolution of democracy in its present form. So, uh, this means that the, in this section, uh, the advent of democracy in this whole paragraph, we will learn that uh, how the historic movements uh, got like in the history and how they changed uh, day by day in the present now. So, let's start with the ancient Greece, which is the earliest democracy began in Athens in ancient Greece in the 6th century BCE. In its ancient form it was called direct democracy now this paragraph means that the earliest uh, democracy began in athens in greece 
also it began in 6th century BCE. Now I have a question for you that what is the full form of BCE? Comment below and uh, give a like to my video also. Let's go forward. In its ancient form, it was known as direct democracy. So, in the early times, it was known as direct form of democracy. Wherein all citizens assembled at one place to make laws and take decisions regarding day-to-day -day matters of governance. As we see panchayats in our uh, village areas, so we see that many uh, panch and uh, there are five people in the panchayat. So, uh, they take decisions on, their, uh, on the behalf of people who are living in the village. So, that's why they uh, assemble, some people assemble and make the they, uh, make the decisions on day-to-day -day matters. For example, to bring who will bring water and line in the or like village they are wells now so they take their like their buckets and then who will come in line like that they just resolve the day-to-day -day matters that were in the past time now we are going to study the second part which is medieval period now in the medieval period several european rulers while making policies consulted church officials and various group of citizens which led to the formation of representative bodies of citizens now uh, this para means that in the medieval period several european rulers so the european rulers they were making the policies and then they concerted while making the policies they concerted to the church officials and various group of citizens also so that everyone would be happy with their uh, uh, everyone would be happy with their laws and which led to the formation of represented bodies of the citizens so how it led to citizens to be in the representative bodies so it led when the european rulers while making while they were making their policies they consulted the church officials and various group of citizens and so then how the representative bodies were created so then with the decline of feudalism feudalism in europe in the 14th century so in which century the feudalism declined in 14th century power shifted from feudal lords to the king and the common people the rise of nationalism also shifted uh, also shifted power away from the feudal lords and laid the foundation from the establishment of democracy so how uh, was establishment of democracy held in europe so here it is told that the decline of feudalism was finished in 14th century itself then when it was finished so the uh, the feudal lords power of the feudal lords shifted from the feudal lords to the king and the common people also common people because uh, we say that common people actually uh, had the kings and queens so that they would like happy with their uh, like uh, uh, they do something like play palaces and the such prayers so they would be happy in that part also the rise of nationalism also shifted power away from the feudal lords this means that the uh, nationalism nationalism means the feeling of loyalty and devotion of to one's nation expressed by glorify glorifying uh, one nation above all others and stressing on the promotion of its culture and interest so nationalism uh, nationalism is this and the rise of nationalism also shifted so nationalism also shifted to someone so it shifted away from the feudal lords and led to the establishment of democracy in europe so it also shifted the power to the common people and the king the nationalism also shifted to them that is why the democracy was formed now the next topic is renaissance in europe now what does uh, renaissance in europe mean the renaissance movement in europe witnessed the rebirth of art literature philosophy science and many other things the renaissance humanists revived greek literature uh, and culture which led to the growth of implementation of the concept of democracy so what to think just uh, did the rebirth of uh, the art literature science and philosophy it was the renaissance movement in europe and uh, from which things the renaissance uh, humanists found that the greek literature and culture were many like uh, 
given the growth to the democracy the renaissance humanist revived from the literature and culture so the literature and culture that the early people wrote they found their some evidences from it and then they uh, implemented the concept of democracy at that time legislative bodies came to uh, came into being so which were composed of uh, representatives from both the ar aristocratic and the non aristocratic families what does this mean that the growth or uh, implementation was like uh, come from the growth of democracy and literature and culture also the legislative bodies coming to the between of these parts in england the glorious revolution of, of 1688 further strengthened the roots of democracy this means in england there was a glorious revolution uh, of uh, 1688 and that the uh, democracy further very strengthened itself so that many people would follow it the revolution gave a blow to the absolute rule of the british king and made the ruler answerable to the parliament the representative body of english people so the uh, english revolution gave a blow to the absolute rule of the british king so they actually promoted the british kings only and then it blew a absolute power on the british king and then the parliament was formed and then representative bodies of the english people formed also now we are going to the next topic which is the american war of independence so what does this mean it means the war of independence ensued between the british colonies and the american and britain in 1775 so what does this mean that uh, the in, uh, war of independence like uh, a bit uh, of our independence india and britain were fighting against each other so uh, same way for america and britain uh, independence they formed the british colony and then they fought to the other thing uh, to the britishers then in 1770 uh, in 1775 this was happened also known as the american revolutionary war it was marked end of the british imperialism in america so it means that when they won their independence the uh, they marked that the end of british is like imperialism in uh, british uh, have removed in the america success of american war of independence assured in the idea of a written constitution in the form of american constitution that was enforced in 1789 so success of american war of independence so when they war, uh, won the war from the britishers then uh, in the happiness they wrote the written constitution for the american constitution that was enforced in 17 1789 a bill of rights was included in the constitution that granted basic rights to the citizens so basic rights that uh, like 18 years above can vote like that basic rights were there of the uh, were there to the citizens the basic rights could not be violated even by the government so these cannot be violated by the government if the citizens would not be happy with that so uh, the judicial will like try to change that laws the citizens were entitled to the basic rights I mean they were like fixed with the basic rights and during the course of judicial proceeding as well so when the judicial the uh, like judiciary when it implements the laws even it cannot change the law uh, at the time of the it was implementing the law now the next topic is the french revolution what is the french revolution the french revolution of 1789 a death blow of divine rights of the king and brought in ideas of liberty equality and fraternity now what does this mean the french revolution that was held in 1789 a death blow of divine rights of the kings and brought in ideas of liberty equality and fraternity this means that when the uh, divine of uh, divine of king brought uh, the cultures and more literature so uh, the ideas that came into the french revolution were liberty equality and fraternity the declaration of rights of man and of the woman and of the citizens declared that an individual is born free and upheld the universe and natural rights of humans it also leads to the 
abolishment of slavery in 1794 in french colonies so this means that when the that every person has the declaration of rights of a man or a sit any citizens it is a born freely in it in its place and it has uh, nothing to be forced of something and also it has its universal rights the natural rights of humans it has on itself and also a uh, like war was held for this uh, abolishment of slavery in 1794 for the french colonies now the next topic and the last topic of this uh, of the advent of democracy is the world wars of russian revolution so before going to this i am going to show you the declaration that was held the, this is on the page number 196 and here you can see there this is a declaration of the french colonies that is why it is said like uh, everyone has its universal adult rights or universal child rights uh, that for example child rights uh, children have to study from 6 years to 14 years uh, like it's mandatory no one can be uh, no one can put them into the house work so that are the universal and natural rights of humans that uh, for that uh, french uh, french colonies actually fought for the slavery in 90, uh, 1794 now coming to the world wars of the russian revolution it means the first uh, first world war was held between 1914 to 1918 it was of two years led to the uh, dissolution of major european imperial powers so this means the first world war from the time to time and then it led to the dissolution of european rulers the new nation states were created where the governments adopted the principles of the democracy to govern their country so the new nation states were created at that time also it was adopted by the principles of democracy to govern their countries so uh, democracy also went there the form of the uh, like history of democracy also went there and they started to use democracy in their lives in those countries The Russian Revolution of seventeen uh, of nineteen seventeen made it clear that political equality is incomplete without social and economic equality. This means that the Russian Revolution that was held between the nineteen fourteen and nineteen eighteen uh, was actually between the nineteen seventeen made it clear that the political equality was incomplete without the social and economic equality. so there must be social and economic equality so that it gains the power and political equality moves on the revolution successfully destroyed the prevalent autocratic and families autocratic families the government and led to the formation of soviet union the soviet uh, the union of soviet soviet Soci socialist republic also uh, was dissolved in 1991 and most countries which led separated from the union chose uh, chose a democratic government so uh, the people who were like very stressed out of this uh, world wars they actually followed the soviet union their republic was dissolved in 1991 and the most countries then followed it and chose the democratic form of government In 1939, the world witnessed the Second World War. After the Second World War, most colonies became independent and chose to choose to become a democratic government to uh, choose their democratic form of democracy, democracy. Some key elements of democracy through the ages were Renaissance. American War of Independence, French Revolution, Russian Revolution. So we have done all these things in the advent of democracy. Now we are uh, moving to why democracy is important. So before moving to it, we are going to see the picture that how the Russian Revolution was held. You can see the Soviet Union Russian Revolution that was held in Russia itself uh, to form and start the like democratic government. that's why this was held and now we are going to why democracy is important today democracy as a form of government is being followed in many countries around the world that's true that it is followed in many countries it has gained dis 
thing to popularity due to the following principles that embodies it. Citizens can elect representatives to form a government. That's true. The right to choose the representatives lies with the people. Yes. The citizens elect their representatives on the basis of universal adult franchise. All adult citizens have the right to vote. Citizens have the right to change or remove the government. This prevents the government from acting in a dictatorial manner. What is dictatorial manner? It means, first let's understand what is dictatorship. Dictatorship is something the power of rule the rest with a uh, person or a small group of people who has or have absolute power with them without effective constitution limitations. And people have like in this dictatorship, such power is also often often obtained forcibly. People do not enjoy any freedom in this power. So that is why the government need to be changes every five years. Elections are held at periodic intervals. This ensures that the government is un, uh, is accountable to the citizens because it knows it can change after few years. Equality and justice are ensured to all the citizens of the country. And it is very important also as equality is being very like powerful. Equality is everything we can say. Uh, like everyone is equal. So that is why we should focus on that part. Citizens can use various platforms to voice their opinions. Freedom of speech and public opinion ensure regular and many regular participations in the form of citizens in the political processes. Also, the citizens play a significant role in a social and political process of a democratic nation. And if uh, like citizens would not be uh, like happy with the government, it can be like reflected with the economic, political and with the social uh, processes also as if the economic will be uh, bad. So the political parties will also be sad with that. Now, key features of democracy. We are coming to the last point of this and we are starting with the key features of democracy. The key features that enable the effective implementation of the democratic process are discussed below. Decision making mechanism, its short form is LEG. I will explain LEG. If you already know what is LEG, comment down below. In India, various organs of the government help in running the government, government machinery. Like in our class, uh, we first give the exam, then the exam goes to the teacher, we submit to the teacher first, then the uh, teacher checks the exams, then she gives the marks, then the uh, then the exam paper comes on us that how marks we have, like how much marks we have got. So this is like, uh, it is a system type thing. So we cannot do that. We can just give our paper to the teacher and just put all our marks on ourselves only. So we don't do that. We first give it to teacher. Teacher checks it. Teacher give the marks on us, uh, on our sheets and also give it back to us so that we can check the answers that we can check our numbers that how much marks we have got so this is known as a system same as it is a gov uh, government system and a government system also works step by step only this wouldn't happen that the if legislature is working so it will uh, go directly to the judiciary before then the executor so we have to learn these processes so that the government thing would be easy for us. The objectives of ensuring the citizens' welfare and safeguarding the interests of the nation in view, these organs of state are divided into three parts. There are three organs of the government, which are legislature, executive, and judiciary. Now, I think you have understood that what is LEJ. LEJ is nothing but legislature, executive, and judiciary. So, First, we are starting with the legislature. The legislature is a lawmaking body. In India, the legislature is composed of two houses, which is the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. The Lok Sabha represents the will of the people through their chosen representatives and makes the laws. The Rajya Sabha shares the legislative powers with the Lok Sabha. 
now uh, we are coming to the next part uh, that how executive works the executive implements the laws and plays an important role in decision making the president is the head of the executive of the union of india and he or she appoints the prime minister the prime minister is the leader of the party that wins the majority of votes in general elections he or she works along with the team of ministers who are elected by the people and are answerable to the uh, answerable to the citizens so what does this line mean that uh, uh, it is showing that the system works like step by step like president elects the prime minister then prime minister has many minister under it ministers are elected by the people people means this uh, citizens that are we people then we are coming to the next process which is judiciary what is judiciary judiciary is the third branch of the government also it administers the just, justice in accordance with the law it has the power to declare the laws also passed by the literature as illegal so if the uh, laws are illegal that are passed by the legislature the lok sabha and the rajya sabha so uh, it it can be like if such laws can be violated by the spirit of the constitution the judiciary can violate that laws the judiciary is free from the control of legislature and executive now we have done this part and now we are coming to the next part which is equality it is the part of key features of democracy only so uh, it is very simple thing that the in the political sphere of democracy it is based on the principle of a universal adult franchise which means that ir irrespective educational qualification on caste color color creed uh, region or any rel uh, religion also all citizens above the age of 18 have the right to vote even they cannot be discriminated by anything uh, for on their colors on their looks on their anything else they cannot be discriminated the constitution of india does the does not to discriminate against any indian irrespective to its gender caste religion uh, and tribe educational background or anything else because they have the right to vote with themselves only equality is advocated in economic and social spheres every citizen has the every citizen has the freedom to choose and practice the an occupation of his or her choice any kind of social discrimination such as untouchability is considered to be violation of the constitution of india and is punishable like by the law also access to public places such as markets uh, playgrounds roads and wells uh, is not denied to any person in the country but it is like denied to the person who live in jail in addition to the constitutional provisions the government of india has also started a number of policies and programs to ensure effective democratic functioning special policies have been framed to become to become better opportunities for the people and uh, for the sections of societies who are like uh, discriminated by the people so uh, the, these policies include something such as reservation for scheduled caste scheduled tribes and other background caste uh, for educational institutions and government jobs low caste housing schemes for the economically weak sections in the country reservation of uh, seats from uh, reservation of seats for women in public modes of transport reservation of seats for women in village panchayats also literacy schemes for encouraging uh, education amongst economically backward sections development schemes for rural areas provision of midday meals or cooked lunch in all government elementary schools so we have learned that why equality is important what are the uh, actually what are the policies uh, what are the policies given by the government and we have learned the decision making mechanism also now we have to learn two things which is justice and human dignity so justice plays an important role in implementation of democracy it protects the uh, people uh, it protects the freedom and the rights of people of democratic country 
like india is a democratic country so the constitution of it saves from the any time of discrimination and it has the freedom of the rights of like every ha every one has the natural rights its birth rights everyone has so it saves and it uh, has the freedom for everything all citizens are equal in the eyes of the law every citizen has the right to seek and receive justice from there now we are we have learned that what is justice also now we are going to learn that what is human dignity human dignity is dignity refers to the recognition of the fact that a human being is worthy of respect so human dignity uh, does means that human being is actually worth it worth it to the respect democracy stands on the foundation of human dignity only there is respect and equality and justice for everyone irrespective for his or her status and achievements or educational background nothing could be discriminated everyone should be equal uh, uh, everyone should be equal everyone should have justice everyone should be uh, given respect by the government so that they would not be like Uh, so that they would enjoy the laws and the fundamental rights guaranteed by the constitution and no one is allowed to actually violate the rights of citizens or uh, he or she will be like it would be punished by the law and it would be uh, the constitution will punish him and also the provisions uh, made by legal system and the constitution and the special schemes launched by the government help in promoting equality of opportunities and releasing the spirit of democracy this means when the pro, uh, provisional like the government schemes that are given by the government are actually helpful for the uh, other people the background class people to participate in the voting sections and also they, it would be very good for them if they know about the uh, civics and if they know about the government that how is our government working so this was our all our chapter and we have learned the democracy what is democracy we have learned we have learned the practice of democracy where it started we have learned the advent of democracy we have learned all the freedoms that the democracy has why is democracy important features of democracy justice human dignity equality and many other things we have learned in this chapter so this chapter is complete and we have to do the uh, question uh, mcq and question answers of this chapter only now we would start with the tick mark questions and recall the chapter in that so based on your understanding tick the correct options with a tick option now in the present day world the most popular form of government is you will uh, comment all the answers in the chat box i will give you three three options you will comment uh, comment them in the down box section so the first question is in the present day world the most popular form of government is dictatorship democracy or monarchy question number 2 is democracy is a form of government in which people govern themselves through elected representatives the kings govern the people or the monarch is elected by the people you have to tell or uh, three uh, you have to tell one from uh, these three now the next question is the story of uh, democracy is as old as the birth of jesus times of mahabharat or ancient greek civilization so remember that i have asked you a question what is the meaning of bce and on that based question only this question is here i will write all the questions in the chat box with its options you have to answer it over there only i will pin my questions and you can see over there let uh, the next question is legislature is the law making body of india has how many houses it has three organs it has three houses it has two houses or it has 15 houses let's go to the fifth question it is the last mcq question which is the head of executive of union india union of india is the chief minister prime minister or president now uh, these all questions you have to uh, write down uh, in the answer in the comment section and i will allow the comments also we have to do the true and false let's get started with it the glorious revolution took place in england in 1688 
yes it's true question number 2 is the prime minister is elected head of the executive no it is the president the president is elected with a head of executive the next question is the russian revolution of 1917 led to the formation of soviet union yes it's true question number 4 is all votes have equal worth and importance in the election of representative democratic government. Yes, it is true. The question number five and the last question is, representative democracy is a form of direct democracy. So this question is false and the answer of this is representative democracy is a form of indirect democracy. Now we have done all these questions, uh, all these questions and true false questions. In the next class, we are going to just study the question answers. I will pin the question answer sheet with the uh, help of my uh, in the comment section, and you can see that question answers and learn them for the next class. So till then, stay safe and stay home. And till then, bye bye. Thanks.